Some people live a miserable life because they can't get rid of their anger. Something is eating inside of them and they're just not able to fight it. So much so that they recognize, I cannot get rid of my anger. And I bet Allah will not forgive me because I'm such an angry person. I'm not able to forgive. Sahaba were really angry at the occasion of Hudaybiyah. What did Allah say about the removal of anger? He said, أَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ He sent peace, calm, tranquility down from the sky into the hearts of the believers. Calmness doesn't come from you. It doesn't come from you and me. We can't calm ourselves down. Musa's mother was dying of nervousness, of fear when she was putting her baby in the water. And Allah says, لَوْلَا أَرَّبَتْنَا عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهَا Had we not tied her heart and kept her strong, Allah made her heart strong. She's not capable of that herself. She's too scarred for that. She's too traumatized for that. There is such a thing as divine intervention that will help you heal. There are sins that you have, tendencies that you have. Some people are very te- tempted by, by fahsha. Some people are very tempted by their anger. They can't control their anger. Some people are overrun with greed, constantly thinking about money. They can't even help themselves. The, the solution to these problems comes from Allah. This is how the sky opens up. The sky opens up for things that are deep inside you. And it comes and it solves that problem inside you. It cleanses you, just like the water cleanses the earth. So, يُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ But that's not enough. He says, وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا He'll put in place for you gardens. He'll make rivers flow for you. This is Allah's way of saying, what will I not give you if you just ask for forgiveness? You and I think when we ask for forgiveness, the only thing we're getting is forgiveness. Allah is telling us, when you ask for forgiveness, there is nothing I don't give you. It's almost like you can ask for other things, or you could just ask for forgiveness and everything's covered. Everything's included. What's left? Money, children, the skies opened up for all of your problems, gardens, rivers, all of it's ready to go. Normally a person would think, when they're asking Allah's forgiveness, then it's going to help them in their akhirah. It's going to help them in their afterlife. These ayat are telling us, no, Allah is not only going to help you in your akhirah, He's going to help you where? In this dunya. Think about hajj. The biggest motivation you and I have for going to hajj and getting our hajj accepted, is that we our past sins are forgiven. We get a fresh start. That's the reason you go. You literally go in the clothes you're supposed to be buried in. Even in hajj itself, when we're going to make the march, ثُمَّ أَفِيضُوا مِنْ حَيْسُ وَفَاضَ النَّاسِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ Go where people go, follow the people, follow the crowd, and seek Allah's forgiveness. The essence of hajj is seeking forgiveness. That's the purpose of it. That's the fundamental goal of it. At the occasion of hajj, what do we ask Allah? رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا Every tawaf. Same dua, the dua from Qur'an, that describes what you should do at hajj. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Give us good in this life and the next life. In other words, give us the kind of good in this life that guarantees the good of the next life. There is such a thing. And you can get all of it when you and I are genuinely seeking forgiveness.